Hello and welcome to Tax Matters. I am Chamaka Ohauchi. How has your week been and how is business going? We are not done yet with the story of the celebration of the 40th anniversary of the CITN. As we told you in the first installment of the story of CITN at 40, the week-long celebration was rounded off with a gala night at which the founding fathers of the institute, 14 of them, were honored as well as all the 14 past presidents. 14, 14, what a coincidence. We begin this episode with more sound bites from the anniversary lecture held in Abuja on the 1st of February, 2022. I stand here on behalf of the 14 people who sat together in 1982, took a decision to establish this body today. I recognize all the 14 of them. I will also like to say that it is a source of joy and pride to stand here today to say that little mustard seed that was planted in 1982 has blossomed, has become strong, has very deep taproot, and also has beautiful tree with branches, and there are a lot of fruits from it. Like the federal government has just said, they are benefiting and eating from the fruits of the Chartered Institute of Taxation. So anybody here, both online and here physically or anywhere, who is a member of the Chartered Institute of Taxation should consider himself a proud person. I want to say that CITN has actually come a long way. The glass ceiling was broken by one woman, and that woman was me. And I have given the opportunity for two other women to come on board and we give God all the glory. I want to commend the Institute for their doggedness, not relenting in their efforts and from one move to the other, they have become well established. Of course, I can continue to collaborate meaningfully with the Institute, with CITN, because we consider ourselves as partners in progress, as we do with other sister bodies, because we act in the public interest. We move on to the interviews we had with three of the founding fathers and mother. How did it all begin? I'm a very busy man. My business involves a lot of traveling and I interface with lots and lots of people and organizations. Tax compliance used to be a big drag on my business. It was time consuming and very costly. But now, no more. Introducing the FIRS Tax Pro Max, the truly fully end-to-end -end tax administration solution for companies' income tax, value-added tax, petroleum profits tax, and all other tax types. For fast, efficient, and convenient end-to-end -end tax experience, log on to www.taxpromax.firs.gov.ng. Tax Pro Max has turned things around for me. It is fast, user-friendly, and cost-effective. FIRS, making tax administration as easy as ABC. The CITN is 40 years today. We'd like to know how it all began. It started in a simple way. My husband, Prince Adeba Duba Bintin Ashayi, bought a tax book for me and said, oh, you are so keen in taxation. Why don't you set up um, an institute like that of Institute of Taxation in London? And I said, fine, that's good. And he said, OK, my uh, partner, Ijiwere, Mr. Ijiwere, uh, seems to enjoy taxation. I will discuss with him when I get to the office, because the, the, the firm of chartered accountant was 
uh, Ijuwele, Dangana, Ashaye, and Ko. So they were partners. There were three partners. So that's why you find them that as founding members, the three of them were there. So he now spoke with Mr. Ijuwele, and there was a, a date for a meeting. I went to Mr. Ijuwele's office. I, we, we spoke, you know, and he, he accepted the, uh, the formation of the institute. There and then, it was decided that Mr. Ijuwele would go to the Inland Revenue, Service, uh, Inland Revenue Department at the time and inform them of the formation of uh, a tax uh, institute. And I should go to the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria and inform them. So we went there. I went. I met uh, with Chief uh, Bisio Midiora. And, uh, and then the question he asked was that, I hope you are not taking away the jobs of chartered accountants. And I said, no, that uh, we just want to have a specialist institute, you know, just like you have medical doctors specializing, you know, you have them as gynecologists, you have them as surgeons, that that is what we want to do. That is a step ahead, you know, for chartered accountants. So he also went to the uh, Federal Inland Revenue Department. Ijiwe came back to say that by the time he met uh, Olon Uleke, they had already formed Association of Tax Administrators of Nigeria. So when he brought that information to the tax practitioners, we said, beautiful. So it's like two minds meeting. So but we decided that we will only have five people for our meeting, uh, that formation. We have five people from tax practitioners and five people from the tax administrators. So we now have five, five people from tax uh, practitioners. We have uh, Prince uh, Adeba Dubabintin Ashaye. We have uh, Emmanuel Ijuere. We have Sam Inuigbe. We have um, uh, Alaji Mutari Dangana and Murenike Babintin Ashaye. We have five from the tax practitioners. From the tax administrators, we have uh, Chief David Olorulike. We had uh, Mr. Isaac Oni. We had uh, Reverend Shodipe. We had, uh, we had uh, Mr. Adekomi. And then we had Mr. P.S. Layade. P.S. Layade was a director with Federal Inland Revenue Department before he moved out to Texaco. But Chief Olorulike said, he wanted him, that is Mr. Layadi, to join the tax administrator. That's how we were ten, you know, because we requested a five-five. So by the time we started the meeting, we we found out that taxation cannot be complete without state representative. We now invited that same day. We invited the um, Alaji Serabu, and he he accepted and he joined us. So the founding fathers of the uh, Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria were 11 as of, four, as of February 4, 1982. We, 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 enjoyed, we enjoyed tremendous uh, uh, cooperation from both chartered accountants and the tax administrators. The chartered accountants attended our seminars, workshops, you know, they, they were free with us. There was no issue of, um, uh, what, what should I call it, uh, disharmony amongst us. Well, um, I would say, from my experience, he said from outside Nigeria. I was in the UK um, doing some business, and at the airport I met an old friend who with me was trained by Coopers. Then it was called Cooper Brothers, now Coopers. We were both chartered accountants. And when we were having a drink, I asked him what he was doing. He told me he was the executive secretary of the British Tax Institute. I found that very interesting because we did not have that such, such body in Nigeria. We had the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. And um, he asked whether we had one. I said we didn't. He said it would be a very good idea if we did and he promised that he would help if there is anything we needed. When I got back to Nigeria, 
I thought about it. The first person I discussed it with my then partner, Mr. Adi Ashai, and he thought it was a fantastic idea. So I said, all right, I will go and see the chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Board at that time. That was the name at the time. Mr. Lauren Leke, he was on the 12th floor of the uh, Federal Secretariat in um, uh, Ikoi. When I mentioned it to him, he was excited because he said, in actual fact, many of the employees of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, who have a lot of experience in taxation, really, when they retire, they have nothing to do. That knowledge is lost. But if you can have an institute that will form a foundation for them, for them to con continue practicing taxation, purely taxation, because those who are chartered accountants can go and do something else, uh, would be a beautiful idea. And he called in one Reverend Shodikwe. Shodikwe, yes, Shodikwe. He was one of the directors. And then we warned um, uh, another gentleman. Anyway, so we discussed it, and they were all excited. We said, okay, we should start work on it. Then the then secretary of the Federal Revenue Board, one Mr. Sulu, um, was asked to work with me closely. And we did. And we came up with the first paper we came up with. We called the body Association of Tax Administrators and Practitioners, ATAP. So we started working with that and started putting people together. And we agreed that um, uh, we would bring in not only chartered accountants and tax practitioners, lawyers too, because the laws, the tax laws were very important. So we decided to bring in members of the Bar Association. So that was how we got the first set of 13 people. And we agreed, we went to the uh, Institute of Chartered Accountants, talked to the then president of the institute, uh, later Alaji Sulaiman, who was the president, and he offered us the use of the council chambers of the Institute of Chartered Accountants. So we started in 1980, but this first meeting was held in 1982. And it was at that meeting we changed the name to the Nigerian Institute of Taxation. Remember I said now, it was a, a, a three-pronged profession. Uh, taxation as a practice by the administrators, chartered accountancy by the practitioners, and then the legal profession. So we were able to put all this together. And that's how the institute started in 1982. Actually, it started in 1980. The idea was conceived in 1980. And the first meeting that was held was Mr. Oloro Leke's office. I went to his office and I told him this idea. He did not waste time at all. That same day, he called these people to his office and they, they all said it was a brilliant idea. So Mr. Sulu was asked to now work with us. That was how it started. Another person I really want to bring in here is Aladi Rabiu, who was the chairman of the Lagos State Internal Revenue at the time. He was very, very cooperative and he used all the resources of Lagos State to also reach out through the Joint Tax Board to other tax administrators. And from the Doyen, how did it all begin? Well, the, it didn't start as the Chartered Institute of Taxation. It started first and foremost as an organization within the tax administration then, which used to be called Federal Inland Revenue Department. And I had my officers working together as a unit under my supervision. And we were the administrators of taxation. We decided to form ourselves into an association of tax administrators. And we were carrying this association to the Joint Tax Board level to make sure that <laughs> the same thing happens at the state level. And so we had this union of tax administrators. Then, of course, we had some other people from the practice, uh, practicing side uh, who were ready to come along with us, and they believed that we had the right to do all these things. So some of them were quite receptive 
about what our stand was. And so they were ready to cooperate with us. One of those people was Mr. Ijewere. And then Ijewere that I was talking with said he was going to UK. And I said, okay, this time, please get into the office of the Institute of Taxation in UK and see whether they can get a copy of their charter and bring it to us. We will study and see whether we can ask the government to give us something like that. And that is where we started, you know. Now, when he came back, he brought a copy of their charter, and we looked into it. We saw the amendment we could make, and we started the process of getting it into government to form <laughs> an institute of taxation in Nigeria. Sir, can you recall, can you remember some of the people that worked with you in those early days of the when the institute was known as Association of Tax Administrators? At that time, um, my deputy directors um, were Mr. Late Mr. Reverend Shudipe, uh, Mr. Ayo Oni, Mr. Nayade, Mr. Naiju, all of them that were actually chartered accountants. But there were others who were not chartered accountants whom we have to bring along because they were senior and they were already, already also involved in assessments. Now to the future. So the institute is 40 years. Where do you see the institute or what do you expect from the institute in 10 years time? I expect the institute to continue to work stronger um, after the storm. That comes the coming period. And going forward into our golden jubilee, I expect the institute to be much stronger than it is. Well, I expect that it will be as relevant and much more relevant in the society, within the economy, and amongst the professionals. In the next 10 years, I will have very sound tax professionals who will help their clients and the government to move the nation forward. The next 40 years, whether we are here in the earth or not, I want this truth to continue to grow. For example, we want training, other training for members. You know, we are professionals, and therefore, training, and uh, the training is very important to any organization like our institute. So, therefore, that is very, very paramount. Also, I want a situation whereby we have not gone, we have gone to international now because we have been recognized in so, so many countries. So, I want to move out from Nigeria and be recognized all worldwide. In fact, we are going to have a world conference very soon, as it's been planned. So I'm, not, I'm sure that Nigeria will be recognized as a professional in taxation all over the world. I want a situation whereby we have expanded. We have uh, some institutions now, which we are now trying to, uh, to fund. So we have had uh, cheers in some universities. We want to pursue that. I see the institute growing stronger and uh, more dynamic, more relevant in the next 40 years because the institute has been very, very contributory to the economic development in terms of fiscal policy in the past 40 years. And we are going to be soaring higher in it. In manpower, num no, in number we've increased. The council is becoming more formidable and we expect more of it in the next 40 years. Uh, at 40, see what the institute has been able to achieve and what we have attained. I, all I can tell you is that uh, the institute will be growing from strength to strength and membership of the institute it will be or is on the increase and it will continue to grow exponentially. And uh, our contribution to the national discourse and national development programs 
is unrivaled and I believe we continue to, it can only get better, I assure you this. This suit have already taken center space and in the next 5, 10, 15 and 20 years in front, it's going to be very great because the challenges we had at the beginning and in the middle, we are not likely to encounter that going forward. So we are going to harness the entire strength, potentials of the Institute to uh, add value to Nigeria and African sub-region. I can foresee that CITN will be able to explore the coastline of West Africa through the instrumentation of Wauti. I could foresee CITM being invited to assist in the setting up of sister institutes within the sub-region. The same thing will happen to other African countries through the auspices of Association of African Tax Institutes. These two bodies were midwived by CITN. They are both CITN ideas, and we thank God today that they are functional. So, in this period you are talking about, CITN will play a domineering role, not only in Nigeria, in, on, on tax matters, but also West Africa and the entire African continent. The future is bright for the CITN, for the tax profession, and for our dear country, Nigeria. The labors of the heroes past and present have not gone unnoticed. And so, at the gala and award night held on Saturday, the 5th of February, 2022, to round off the celebration, the 14 founding fathers and 14 past presidents were recognized. It was a night of glitz and glamour. I must confess that it has been a grand swell of positive emotions and excitement across the length and breadth of the country in celebration of this 40th anniversary of our great institute. The institute has set this evening apart to wind down on the formal events listed for the celebration and confer awards on our past president and founding father. They have made tremendous impacts in the nurturing of the Institute as well as tax profession in Nigeria. These people came together to form a profession and said, look, we want to have a tax profession. And I'm happy that as of today, this profession has shown its strength in terms of its ability to meet the demand of the nation. I want to say, God bless all my predecessors. And it's a prayer that is coming from the depth of my heart. High point of the evening was recognition of the founding fathers and past presidents of the institutes. First, the past presidents, some of whom were in attendance and some of whom were represented. Among those physically present among the founding fathers were Reverend Olariwaju Adekomi, Mrs. Moronike Babintina Shaye and Chief David Ajibola Oloruleke, who also served as the first president of the CITN. When I remember those days and the difficulties of getting taxation mentioned, even in the executive council of the federal government, not to talk of getting a charter, I say that we thank God for all his masses. Taxation is now becoming a subject matter on daily conversation. The government itself has become more aware that they now have to take note and do very well in their tax collection. They are worth to Dr. Emmanuel Itoya Ijore, who was in attendance at the beginning but had to leave, was received on his behalf by Mr. Simon Kato, the treasurer of the CITN. Awards were also presented to those members of staff of the CITN who turned 40 with the CITN. <music> 
once again, congratulations to the CITN. And to our viewers, thank you for watching. Let's do this again next week. Same station, same day of the week, same time of the day. Bye for now.